What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And before we dive into this preview, this all-important preview, this Week 5 matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Kansas City Chiefs, I have a question for you guys that absolutely, positively needs answered. And I had to put it before the intro so you guys could answer the question in the comment section down below. Who would win in a fight to the death? A full-grown grizzly bear or a full-grown gorilla? I gotta know. Hit that intro. Fournette, Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, now it's time to get down to business. This Week 5 matchup is highly anticipated for many reasons. A lot of people look at it like a preview of the AFC Championship game. I'm not too sure if I see it that way, but I also see it as the number one offense facing the number t number one defense, as well as the Jags' middle-of-the-road offense taking on the absolute worst NFL defense. So it's going to be one hell of a matchup. The matchups are going to be key throughout this game and I have nothing but respect for the Kansas City Chiefs I love Patrick Mahomes I love what he's been able to do this year so I'm gonna dissect the game without talking any shit whatsoever because like I said I have nothing but respect for the Kansas City Chiefs without further ado ladies and gentlemen I am Tree from BigJReport.com this is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Kansas City Chiefs week number five preview Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, let's start off with talking about what we need to do on the offensive side of the ball, and let's get the most obvious, obvious thing out of the way, and that is Blake Bortles has to play consistent. Blake Bortles needs to be able to piece two good games together, and Bortles usually in big games is able to step up. You see it in all the Pittsburgh games, both of them that he's played in. Both of the New England games, though he did, uh, though we did lose the AFC Championship game, that throw that he tried to hit D.D. Westbrook on, Stephon Gilmore made it an incredible, incredible play. You know, there's no way that that was Blake Bortles' fault. The throw was where it needed to be, but Stephon Gilmore made that play. <clears throat> and Bortles also, this Kansas City Chiefs defense, is 32nd in the lead. So I'd like to see what Blake Bortles can do. Obviously, this is not a great defense. He went up against New England who had a decent, solid offense, but a terrible defense. And that's kind of what the Chiefs are. They have a really good offense, not great defense. Same thing with Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh has a pretty good offense. You know, all these good teams in the AFC have pretty good offenses, but not very good defenses, where the Jags are on the flip side, where we have a pretty great defense and not that great of an offense. But Bortles needs to do what he needs to do. He needs to pick apart the matchups, make sure he's throwing it to the right guy, making sure he doesn't cause any turnovers, because turnovers will cost us this game, because Kansas City is going to be putting up a lot of points, especially with Patty Mahomes uh, under center. Now, the wide receivers must have a day. D.D. Westbrook, Keelan Cole, Dante Moncrief, that three-headed monster needs to go out there and prove why they are a three-headed monster. Any one of these three wide receivers could be the number one wide receiver during any given week, and this is the week they need to prove it. Uh, I'd like to see Blake spread the ball out to all three of these guys, keep the Chiefs' defense on their toes. <clears throat> Excuse me, on their toes, so you know they're not focused in on just one guy. You know they're probably going to be focused in on D.D. Westbrook and Dante Moncrief um, a little more this week because those are the two guys that had the big game last week. But let's get Keelan Cole involved. You know they're going to be sleeping on Keelan Cole. Probably going to put their number three corner on Cole. Let Keelan Cole just go off, you know. Pick apart the matchups is what I'm saying, you know, with these wide receivers. Whoever their number one corner is on, okay, great. But whoever their number three corner on and two, you know, pick that apart because, you know, these matchups are favorable in the Jags in the Jags' favor all across the board, I think, offensively and defensively. As far as matchups go, pure matchups between the Jags and the Chiefs, the Jags win almost every single matchup. Uh, except for maybe across the offensive and defensive line, which we will go over later. But as far as uh, corners, wide receivers, and then, you know, on the flip side, our corners against their wide receivers, the Jags are favored in all of those matchups. Currently, the Chiefs are three-point favorites over the Jags. Uh, they obviously didn't really look <laughs> at the matchups, I don't think. Uh, Tyreek Hill went out this week and said that Jalen Ramsey was an all-right corner, and, ah, fuck. Tyreek's gonna regret saying that, you know, that's gonna that's gonna make Jalen Ramsey play a little fired up as I take a sip of my coffee. As any good sports personality does, 
in between topics. Next up, we kind of touched on it a little bit. The offensive line uh, needs to get a push for the run game to get going. Obviously, the Jags are going to be without uh, Leonard Fournette this week. So with TJ Yeldon and Corey Grant being those two backs that they need to uh, <clears throat> run the ball with, there's going to be a lot of inside zone, outside plays. And uh, Josh Wells and uh, Jeremy Parnell are going to have to seal the edge. And, you know, Chris Reed and... I don't know if Chris Reed's playing. I think AJ Can is playing. But Josh Wells needs to step up and have a decent game. He managed to have a pretty all right game last week uh, against the Jets. But it's a big deal that he goes out there and he has a good game. So that way, uh, running lanes are available for these two running backs. Because if they are not available like they were last week, the run game is not going to be uh, where it needs to be. And Blake's going to have to throw for almost 400 yards again. Uh, not that we really needed to, <laughs> to throw 400 yards against the Jets, but you know what I mean. Like, we're going to need to throw 400 yards against the Chiefs uh, in order to get the victory. So hopefully this run game is something that the Jags can rely on at least a little bit. I think, again, TJ Yeldon has done a fantastic job filling in for Leonard Fournette during his absence. Now we need to show the world why D.D. Westbrook is the next big thing. But I, like I said, if the matchup isn't there then don't just force feed the D.D. the ball. But I would like to see a show why D.D. Westbrook is one of these great wide receivers upcoming because he is. He is. Like, that's just how it is. Like I said, I have a lot of faith in this kid. I think he's going to go out, do great things for the Jags the next couple of years, and hopefully this year, you know, he could really show, maybe get 700, 800 yards receiving, and maybe even more because, you know, we don't know how long we're going to be without Leonard Fournette. So, you know, the game plan, the game plan might change. But I want to see D.D. Westbrook breakout on national television because the game is going to be nationally televised uh, during the one o'clock 10 in the morning for your boy uh game so <clears throat> just because it's nationally televised doesn't mean you guys don't have to come to the stream though just so just so you know but yeah so dd westbrook on a big stage needs to perform so let's go over on the flip side on the defensive side of the ball <sighs> what is going on here Okay, I don't know what that was, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, Jalen Ramsey and A.J. Boye must do a good job um, stuffing the defense. And I think that they are favorable all across the field. Uh, A.J. and Jalen, they need to do the best job they can to shut down um, Patty Mahomes' best two options. And I think that Jalen's going to go up on Tyreek Hill. And that's just going to be it. Like, that's done. Like, Tyreek Hill's a fast, speedy guy, and he's a decent wide receiver. But with Jalen Ramsey's technique, there ain't no way that Tyreek is going to, like, be able to get away from Jalen Ramsey's grasp. And to be 100% honest, I'm not really even sure who the number two wide receiver is down there in Kansas City. But A.J. Boye needs to do his job to shut him down. And then uh, Tashawn Gibson. It's going to be matched up again with Travis Kelsey this week like he was uh, with Gronk. So, Deshaun just needs to keep on going out there, proving why he's one of the best safeties in the league, and he can cover the tight end very, very good. So, uh, try to make Kelsey a non-factor, and I think that's that's something Deshaun's going to be able to, uh, to pride himself in during, uh, you know, in, in the moment. He's going to pride himself on uh, covering Travis Kelsey. I don't know why that took so hard for it to get out of my mouth. Now the pass rush needs to get after Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes hasn't really been flustered all season long. I think this Chiefs offensive line is pretty alright. It's pretty decent. But this Jaguar defensive line is elite. You know, great. So let's get after Patrick Mahomes. He hasn't really been welcomed to the NFL yet. He's really good at eluding pressure and really, you know, making sure guys miss. Which is something that I really like to see from a quarterback and Patrick Mahomes like I said I have nothing but respect for the dude threw the ball with his left hand that's fucking nutty I watched that live it was crazy but you know I think that's something that we need to do we need to be able to take him to the ground we need to be able to force turnovers it's a big thing force turnovers and this defensive line also needs to make sure Kareem Hunt doesn't rush for over 200 yards because that's a big thing is a run defense it has improved over the weeks especially uh, Marcel Darius has stepped up uh, in his role to help out stopping the run game. So I think our run defense is another big thing as far as the defensive line goes and the linebackers that we need to stop Kareem Hunt. But it's also really, really important that we get after uh, Patrick Mahomes, make sure he's on the ground and not <clears throat> having a lot of time to make crazy throws like he has been since he's came into the league. 
And that was my Jaguars versus Chiefs Week 5 preview. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at Treep Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Trevon Pixley. And follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them to just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.